Okay, let's just work through some methods problems. So, we've got a function here. It's a it's going to be a quartic function. Okay, because it's got an x to the power of three and an x being multiplied together, and it's going to be a negative quartic. So it's going to be a little bit like a inverted parabola, but probably take a bit of a different shape. You know, there's heaps of different quartic options, but you know, it, it's it's going to be some sort of inverted parabola type deal, okay? Um, so part A really wanted you to just show that these x values here um, produce a y value of zero, i.e. these are the x ints. I'll just do the first one, uh, f of zero equals one eight negative one cubed. That cancels out, which is just multiplied by eight plus one. So this is going to be one eighth of negative one cubed is negative one. That's going to be one eighth of negative eight plus one. An eighth of negative eight is negative one plus one, which indeed is zero. So do the same thing with f of three, and you'll find that it will be equal to zero as well. Okay. So now what they want us to do is get the derivative, and there's our derivative. So let's remove that stuff there. And um, what I do with this is I note that this part here is one function multiplied by another function plus a constant. So the derivative of a constant, that's just going to chop that out. This is going to be zero. And so all I need to do is get the derivative of this part here. Now you've got the option of expanding that into single terms, then multiplying by that, then multiplying by one eighth. But that's going to be a bit of a nightmare. So the best thing to do is to note that one function when multiplied by another function is the prod product rule. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm just going to go u equals x take one all cubed and v equals eight take three x. Um, du dx is going to be three x take one squared multiplied by the derivative of the inside which is just going to be one so it's just that um, don't forget to feel free to chain rule elsewhere so if you're not comfortable doing that derivative um, in your head please do it oh, i did it for many many years and it's only now that you know i feel confident enough to do that and even then i sometimes get these wrong so if i was a conservative player I'd certainly chain that. Um, dv dx is going to be negative 3. So let's get f dash x now. It's going to be 1 eighth of the derivative or the chain, uh, the product rule of that. So it's going to be u dv dx, which is negative 3 x take 1 cubed um, plus, so u dv dx plus v du dx. Um, which is going to be 3x take 1 squared, 8 take 3x. Now remember what happens is the constant cancels out, so that plus 1 just is 0 in the end. Right, so now we've got to get it to look like this. And um, it's a common thing with product rule to have a factor come out of this. And the factor will involve this thing and this thing because that it appears on both sides okay so we get it on this side and we get it on this side here so it's a really common thing that we take at x take one or this thing here is a common factor so let's see what we can grab so what i'm going to do is grab note that this is positive so i'm going to take three out as a common factor one eighth times three x take one squared as a common factor now that's going to be negative x take one so that multiplied by that will give you that. Now we've got to get this part here. So that multiplied by that. So that's just going to be one. So we're just going to do plus eight. Take three X. Okay. And that's going to be 3 over 8 times x take 1 all squared 
negative x plus 1 plus 8 take 4x 3 on 8 let's get rid of the multiply and just put it as x take 1 squared that's going to be what is it negative 5x plus 9 hopefully that's what we needed to show take 4x oh, what am I doing it's this thing here so 8 take 3x and I've just written 8 take 4x I've probably got the show in my mind anyway that's my excuse that should be a 3 which means negative x take 3x is negative 4x all right so I reckon show that questions were written for me because I just make stupid mistakes but there it is there so shown that and specify the values of x for which f dash x is greater than zero right so this is f dash x let's imagine what the graph will look like it's a cubic okay because we started with a quartic we end up with a cubic as its derivative and it's going to have a zero an x-intercept there at one and an x-intercept at negative 9 on negative 4, which is 9 on 4. Uh, the cubic is going to be a negative cubic. So what's going to happen is it's going to come through there. Ah, uh, no, hang on a sec. So that one there is repeated. So what it does is it'll do this there. Now remember, this is f dash x versus x, right? And what we're looking for is when is f dash x larger than zero? So this is when f dash x is larger than zero. This is when f dash x is equal to zero. And this is when f dash x is less than zero. So what I'm looking at is this part of the graph here. And I note that it's larger than zero up to there, not including there and there so i'm going to say that um f dash x greater than zero where x is an element from negative infinity all the way up to not including one union with um one two nine on four not including the nine on four because f dash x is zero at that point Okay, sketch the graph of f of x. Okay, so what I might get you to do is now that you know this part here, I might get you to try that yourself and see how you go with sketching that graph, noting that what, what we've got here is a stationary point at this point. Stationary point, oh, let's just sketch it. Okay, all right. So here is f of x v x. Now, its x-intercepts were at 0 and 3. It's going to have a stationary point at 1 and 9 on 4, which is 2 and a bit, 1, 2. So you're going to have to excuse the scale a bit, but 9 on 4 is 2 and a bit. It is a negative so it's going to come down like that all right now where what are the y values for the stationary point oh, i can't be bothered doing this full substitution so i'm going to do it on the calculator Okay, so I'm just trying to get the y value of the stationary points. Well, that was easy. So f of 1 is 1. And f of the other one Point three at nine and four. Okay, so here's what I think is going to happen. It's going to come. Up. 
inflect down back through there. Bit of a guess. Let's just make sure. Not bad. Yeah, that's its behavior. Okay, not an easy graph sketch, that one. All right, yeah, this question. So what we want to do is note the equation to the normal at x equals a is, where a is a parameter in this cubic function. So what we're going to do is work out the tangent at x equals a. Okay, now remember what we do is we work out the, the equation of the tangent at x equals a. So let's say we've got a function here. This is x equals a. This will be the tangent. The normal is going to run perpendicular to the tangent or at right angles to the tangent. Okay, so let's just get the tangent at x equals a, and then what we'll do is we'll then get the normal. Okay, so here it goes. So I'm going to work out the gradient of the tangent at x equals a. So that's going to be 6x squared take 6ax. 5 cancels out. Let's factor it, 6x, x take a. All right, and we're going to note that it's got stationary points at x is equal to 0. So somewhere along the line, x equals 0 is a stationary point, and somewhere along the line, x equals a is a stationary point. Now that is interesting, okay? So let's think about what that might mean. So we've got a cubic function. Okay, and it's a positive cubic, so it's going to have a stationary point at x equals 0 and another stationary point at x equals a. So whatever the value of a is, all right, it's always going to have a stationary point there, no matter what. Okay, that's what that suggests. Okay, so we want the equation to the normal with the equation at x equals a. Well, what's the equation of the tangent at x equals a? If it's a stationary point, the tangent is simply going to be y equals whatever that value is there that it hits. Don't know. Doesn't matter. The thing is, the normal will run at right angles to the tangent. So it has to have this equation here. Well, this, it's got to be along this line here. Oh, God, that's a terrible straight line. But along the line x equals a. So the line is going to be x equals a. Very tough problem. Um, let's see if we can visualize that a bit better. So I'm going to do y equals 2x cubed take 3 times a times x squared plus 5. All right, now notice here whatever a is, that's going to be the stationary point. So if I increase a, say to 2, there's the stationary point. All right, so what I'm going to do is put a point down, which is um, a comma um, a comma f of a. Oops. All right, so there's a, which is a coordinate a f of a. Now you can do this thing with GeoGebra. We're just going to put in a tangent at that point. So there's the tangent. Okay, so its value changes. What well, won't change is my will it allow me to do normal perpendicular line. So I'm going to do a line perpendicular to this one here. So there it is. Alright. And so the normal will always have the equation x equals a no matter what. Alright, tough problem that one. Graph of the function y equals f of x is shown below. Okay, so what could be the graph of the derivative? Okay, so what I do with this is I note that there's a zero gradient there. Okay, so for f dash x, which I'll, I'll plot on the same axes, it's going to have, the gradient is going to be zero there because f dash x will be zero there. f dash x will be zero there as well. 
Right now, here's what I do. I note that this part here, the gradient along here is positive, 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 positive. So I essentially give it a positive gradient. It doesn't really matter about the shape, but it's going to have a positive gradient. And note here, the gradient is negative to this point here. So it's going to be negative all the way along, and it gets back to a zero gradient or zero there. Then what happens is it comes negative again. Okay, so the gradient is negative along here. So it's just going to kick back down. Again, I'm not too sure of the overall shape. That's how I'd do a problem like this. So I get a function that looks like that, which can only be by a quick look. Yeah, can only be B. Okay, it's a really important skill to be able to do that. So do that question over and over again and see if you can, from that graph, generate this. But the skill of being able to um, visualize the gradient graph from the original function is, is very, very important. Okay, this one here is also a difficult problem. Okay, I think the best way to do this is maybe to try this one out on the calculator. So what I'm going to do is get it to graph x cubed, take 9x squared plus 15x plus w. And I'm going to check it, and I'm not going to hit this one here, I'm going to hit this one next to it. All right, now what that does is it opens up this parameter window, and notice what's going to happen is, as I change that, notice how for a value of w equals negative 7, there's one intersection and two intersections. Anything below negative seven, we've only got this one intersection over here. Now, if I increase it, let's see how far I can increase it. So I'm gonna start increasing it. So I've got three intersections there. I'm gonna just change the parameters on this settings. I'm gonna get it to go much higher. So let's see, get it to go up to 30. Now let's do 30. Need to be smaller than the maximum. Oh, that's the step value. Okay, bring it up. Up you come, up you come, up you come. Here it comes. All right, so there we've got one and two intercepts, but any value above 25, and we go to one intercept there. Okay. So what it's essentially saying is this equation has only one solution for x when x is less than um, negative 7, it seemed, so negative 8, negative 9, negative 10, um, and for values of x greater than what seemed to be 25, okay? And um, that's essentially how I'd try to visualise that. We're basically moving a cubic function up or down by a given value so that we can just move this either up or this part down, okay? Um, so we can move that up and that up or that down and that down to meet the requirements for the solution, okay? Um, so that's one way I think of doing that. Let me see if I can think of another way of doing it. What we could do Again, this is a calculator question, so we could define this function. And we could diff it to find out where its stationary points are. So it's at one and five. f of 1 is 33. Oh, oof, 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 oof. All right, so you've just been treated to a good um, good example of how calculators can misbehave. So 
f of x, I've just rewritten that. Now there's f of x there with a w. It's got a 26 in there. How did the 26 come about? It's from this, okay? What happened was w was set a value when I last graphed it of 26. So w actually has been set. So this is a good lesson here um, of understanding. So if I hit w, w is 26. So what we're going to do is clear all variables, w, and now do f of 1. Okay, so this is going to be whatever w is plus 7. And if I do f of 5, it'll have something to do with the 25, w take 25. Okay. All right, so how does this work? So if that's our kind of like our cubic function, this point here is w plus 7, and this is w take 25. Okay, and what we want here is when will it be when that point there is larger than zero? So w take 25 is larger than zero, w greater than 25, and when will this one be less than um, zero? So w plus 7 less than zero w less than negative 7, okay? So there are two values, w greater than 25, w less than negative 7. There you go.